Hi. Uh, as uh, we humans are having very deep problems. This problem is the problem of racism. Why are humans racist? Of course, no one uh, doesn't accept to be racist. Uh, everyone said that we are not uh, racist, but as a matter of fact, racism is a part of human life, especially in our day, racism is on the rise. And of course, there are many different version of racism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, chauvinism, and so on. People are manifesting racist behavior and attitude consciously or um, Consciously. So, racism is a crisis at the heart of our humanity. It is necessary that we have to address the question and the problem of racism seriously and profoundly and realistically. I think the most important thing to accept and recognize the existence of the problem of racism. Denying or repressing racist attitude and behavior uh, doesn't lead us to anywhere. So we have to recognize and accept this problem because accepting and recognizing racism requires the understanding of this phenomenon. There is an important question in this regard. Are we born as a racist? The answer is clear and certain. No human being was born as racist. The point I would like to make here, racism is not a natural part of our humanness. It is not a natural dimension of our humanity. So this is very important. So we have to make differences between racism and humanity. Then, if racism is not a part of our humanness, if it is not uh, a central part of being human, why some people are racist? The point is here, Racism is a superficial aspect of our humanity. People 
are becoming racist after they born. So what makes them racist? It is culture, education, society. I mean, superficial human factors and influences makes people racist. So the point is here, racism is something learned later. So racism is a human-made problem. It is man-made problem. So if it is Racism, it is invented by society through education, through uh, culture, and so on. That means that racism is something artificial, part of our the human identity. It is an artificial construction which destroys and poisons our life. So understanding racism as something human made invention is something artificial is something uh, is a result of learning that means that if we learned racism similarly we can learn how to be a real human being so the point is here we have to make a choice whether are we going to learn and internalize cultural, social and educational influences which could make us racist or are we going to learn to be a real human being. So this is very important issue. So when we talk about the problem of racism, how can we understand racism in terms of psychology? I think Franz Fanon is one of the most important thinkers, social scientists and psychologists who could help us to understand psychological dimension of racism. Franz Fano said that human psychology is intimately and deeply linked to social, political, historical and cultural forces. So that means that racism is not something we invented in our mind. Politics Society, history makes our mind, makes our psychology racist. So, in Fanonian perspective, the development of racism 
in our psychological constitution comes from society, culture, history to psychology. So, this is a very realistic understanding of psychology of racism. So what Fanon tries to say, he said that racism is not fantasy, is not a delusion. It is a reality. Racism grounded in social, cultural, historical forces. It is something real. You have to deal with the question of racism as a real reality which originated from culture, society, history, and so on. And Fanon analyze the psychology of racism in the context of colonialism. He wrote a very important book, Black Skin, White Masks. In this very important book, Uh, Fanon analyze black-white relations black and white when they meet in colonialist context both sides they are under the burden of psycho-existential complex. Colonizers, colonialist powers, or white people of this time, when they meet black people, They don't consider black people as black. They don't accept because they don't accept this reality. In their mind, the ideal model is being white. And they say that if this black become white, look like white, like us, so they will be normal human beings. Or they could, we could treat them as a woman. So, in this approach, white colonizers, they are imposing their white identity or they are imagining their white identity as something ideal for black people. So, what does colonialist one. So, he doesn't, he, colonizer, colonialist power, don't want black people to be white. But they say they want black people to look like white in terms of conscious, in terms of culture, in terms of lifestyle, and so on. And then we could ask the other question. What does white, uh, black men and women want? The answer is they want to be white because whiteness 
is ideal for them because in colonialist context cultural and political forces imposed on you to be human means to be white because everything normally every human being has white has it the white they have all this ability all these powers in ideal level so uh, but uh, when black people when the, when black people when they want to be white this is not something normal. Fanon said that desiring to be a white anormalize, pathologize the personality of black people. It is a neurotic situation because black people is not white. It says he's, he, he or she, they are black. But they don't accept they are black. They say they want to be white. So, but desiring to be white does not mean that they are not uh, black. So, their personality is divided they are all there is always tension conflict in the heart of their personality so and they don't know how to overcome these neuroses because white racism imposed on them and they simply internalize the values of other the value of colonialist powers so uh, When, when this neuro, he called this neurosis neurosis of blackness. As a result of neurosis of blackness, they are uh, experiencing black people. They are experiencing during colonialist time. A cultural uh, trauma uh, I mean it is not just personal you know I mean uh, in colonialist context black people the desiring to imitate white racism or to, to desire to be, to look like white. It is not per individualistic. It is not intra-psychic situation. It is a cultural situation because this neuroticism shared almost by all uh, black people so it becomes a culture so in colonialist context racism racist people they consider themselves as superior 
and they consider people who don't who don't look like them as inferior and all the problems all the crises all negative things they think that it is not as a result of colonialism but it is a result of uh, black people so racism always need scapegoating they always need a group of people in order to project their guilt, their mistakes, their negative side on them. So racism never accept responsibility. For example, a problem happened in Europe, they say we are facing this economical problem because of immigrants, because of Muslims, because of uh, black, black people and so on. They are always uh, blaming others. So racism uh, has a very strong mechanism of projection. Of course, racism is not rational. There is no rational basis uh, for racism. In colonialist context, uh, colonialist power, they are aware of this fact, but they rationalize their irrational uh, racism. They say, yes, uh, we are colonialist powers, we are colonizers, but it is not something we want. We are forced to colonize you because white there is a burden on the shoulder of white man what is this burden the burden is to civilize uncivilized people these are black so irrationality i mean racism itself it's a neurotic situation, irrational situation. And, but in colonialist context, racism presented as something healthy, as something normal, and something very rational. Fanon challenged that and said, no, racism is not healthy, it's not rational, and it's not normal. And uh, racism uh, based on fear. Uh, black people, they are always afraid of white people because they think that they are superior, they have wonderful superhuman abilities, uh, they could do whatever they want, for example in South Africa or in other black countries when black people saw white soldier, police or uh, 
other black uh, ofi white officials they are afraid of them because racism creates the climate of fear so without fear racism cannot be prevalent in any society so the racism become influential in society uh, and in the minds of people when it set up it is own uh, mechanism of fear Uh, and racism invented baseless myths about uh, people for example In colonialist context, Fanon said that colonialist power always imposed this idea on the society. They say black people don't have history, don't have culture, don't have science, don't have philosophy, don't have religion. They have nothing. They, they have no history. Because simply they are not human. Only white people have history, have uh, culture, have philosophy, have politics. Everything white people have. But black people, they don't have. And their colonialist power, they are ridiculing white man, oh, sorry, black man uh, talking uh, the way Black man, black man and woman dress, their family life, and so on. So they don't uh, recognize black man has an identity. It is just a matter of ridiculous. So and uh, and most of the time in colonialist context even black people are not aware of themselves they say yes we don't have history we have nothing because why? Because white men tell me that you don't have history, you don't have civilization, you don't have culture, you don't have belief, you don't have values. They are master because they know better than they know me better than I do. So Racism and it is it based on dichotomy. Fanon said that money hunt thinking. Money hunt way of thinking means talking about the world or humanity whether 
evil or good. White people, white colonizer, colonialist powers, they represent the forces of good, but black people, uh, they represent the forces of uh, evils. So colonialist domination, colonialist white domination over black people means the dominion, the hegemony of the forces of good over the forces of evil. So racism always construct the idea of evil and good as opposed to each other. So, what uh, uh, Fanon really made very important point and ideas regarding the psychology of racism. What he tries to say, racism is an institution. It is a political institution. It is a social institution. It is a cultural institution. Psychology of racism when racism becomes psychology in colonialist context, it is a result of a social institution, political institution, and cultural institution. So, in order to understand psychology of racism, we have to understand the political, social, and cultural and historical institution of society. Briefly, understanding of racism requires the understanding of all human institutions. Without a total understanding of racism, it is impossible to understand our human situation realistically. Thank you.